Welcome back to this channel for practice problems for actuarial exams. My name is Krzysztof Ostaszewski. You can find information about me at smartyrl.it forward slash Jedi. My advice on how to pass actuarial exams is at smartyrl.it forward slash pass. This video channel is at smartyrl.it forward slash pass actuarial exams. Here's information about online seminars and study manuals for exams PFM, IFM, and LTAM that I offer. I direct the actuarial program at Illinois State University. You can find information about it at smartyrl.it forward slash actuary. If you would like to offer a tax deductible donation to support our students, please go to smartyrl.it forward slash help ISU actuary. Here's a problem from uh, for today from the last exam LTAM. A defined benefit pension plan provides a retirement benefit with an accrual rate of 1.3% of final one-year salary up to 55000 per year of service and 2% of final one-year salary above 55000 per year of service. You are given that the pension is paid as a monthly annuity due from age 65. <coughs> there are no early retirement or other benefits. There are no exits from the plan before retirement except for death. Mortality follows the standard ultimate life table. Salaries increase at 2.5% uh, at the end of each year. Interest rate is 5%. A double dot 65 upper 12 is equal to 13.086. Elizabeth, who is 50 at the valuation date, has 20 years of service in the plan. Her salary in the prior year, in the year prior to the valuation date, um, was 88,000. Calculate the normal contribution for Elizabeth using the traditional unit credit method. And you should know that the word, the expression "normal contribution" comes from the um, textbook for exam LTAM. And the word that is normally used in the industry is normal cost. Well, just get used to it that um, that there is different terminology in the textbook than in the industry, and uh, probably you need to learn both. And here's the solution. Because there are no exits, the normal contribution or normal cost is calculated as the accrued liability at time one, which using the, the notation from the textbook is basically just written as a reserve at time one, times uh, P50 uh, times 1.05 to a negative one minus uh, zero V, so accrued liability at time zero at the beginning of the year. And this comes from the standard recursive relationship where you take the initial um, reserve or initial uh, accrued liability and if there is a contribution you add the contribution um, carry this with interest to the end of the year but you subtract um, the cost of all exits and you typically do this assuming they occur in the middle of the year and what is left is the uh, accrued liability at the end of the year. Now, of course, what is left at the end of the year is only for people who are still left at the end of the year, so it's multiplied by the probability of survival. And that probability in this case is P50 because she is 50. We have um, the accrued liability at time zero equal to 20 times uh, 0.013 times 55,000 um, plus 0 0.02 times 88,000 minus 55,000 because of this two forms of accrual for salary below um, up to 55,000 and salary above 55,000. Then um, the um, cost of this um, will be uh, at retirement and it will be used to buy the annuity um, and the cost of the annuity is a double dot 65 upper 12 
and then 15E50 uh, takes into account the probability of survival till age 65 and the discount factor from age 65 to 50. So this ends up being the uh, actuarial present value at the beginning of the year of the benefit earned at that point. We look up the values for um, 15E50 from the standard ultimate life table, but uh, the uh, pure endowment is not given for 15 years into the future. It's 5, 10, and 20. So instead, I just took the probability of survival uh, taken as the ratio of population size uh, at age 65 divided by population size at age 50 multiplied by the 15-year uh, discount factor at 5% a year. A double dot 65 upper 12 is known to be 13.086 um, and everything else is given. And so we calculate this and that's approximately 166,082.97. And then we do the same calculation um, at the end of the year, um, but I do it with um, taking into account this P50 divided by 1.05, which is a pure endowment factor for one year, uh, because we need this in the difference of the two. So we actually need this number, and then we'll subtract the first number we just calculated. And with this number, um, we basically bring the um, cost of the accrued liabilities at the end of the year to the beginning of the year. So we will need to discount the cost of the benefits at age 65 also to the beginning of the year to make it equivalent to this. Well, it's 21 years that she will have at that point, 1.3% for each year for salary up to 55000 and then 2% for salary in excess of 55000 but her salary will not be 88000 a year from now. It will be 88000 with the raise she will get, which will be 2.5%. So that's why you have this 88000 times 1.025 minus 55000 And then the rest, the discounting, because we're discounting from age 65 to... Um, the cost of benefits uh, from age 65 to age 50 to the beginning of the year, it's just like in the first calculation. And again, we look up the numbers in the standard ultimate life table. And by the way, you can find that table at smarturl.it forward slash sult. So it's very simple, very easy to find it. And we calculate it to be 179,967.51. And the difference of the two quantities we just calculated is the normal cost, or normal contribution. That's 13,885, and that's answer C. Please remember this is copyrighted material. The problem itself comes from the Society of Actuaries. The solution is mine. And good luck in your studies, and good luck on the test.